Whether you're an engineer in a design office or a construction worker on a building site, being able to read and understand what's being shown on a set of construction drawings is a really important skill to have. As a graduate structural engineer, this is a skill I've had to develop very quickly as every day I'm required to either review or work on the design that gets produced on these drawings. And seeing as the things that I learned or struggled to understand is still quite fresh on my mind, I thought that this would be a good time to share this knowledge. So in this video, I'm going to explain some of the common things that appear on structural construction drawings so that those of you who want to master this skill can get a good understanding of the basics. And with that, let's just get started. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to cover is a view that is provided on almost every single set of construction drawings, and that is a plan view. And a plan view is basically what something would look like if you were looking down on it from above. One of the important things to note about a plan view is that they're not only limited to looking down at the very top of a structure, but they can also be taken at different heights throughout the building. So for example, say you were looking at a set of drawings that were created for a multi-story building. There could be a different drawing showing the foundation plan view, ground floor plan view, and also a plan view for each level of the building. Another thing to note about plan views is that they aren't just reserved for showing high level overviews of the layout, but they can also be used to show intricate detail for things like connections and joints. Also, one more thing I wanna add about plan view drawings that show floor plans is that they often have grid lines added to them. And these grid lines are something you should definitely take notice of because they can be very helpful when you're trying to orientate yourself when you're looking at drawings that are from a different point of view. Okay, and another very popular view that is used is an elevation view. And an elevation view essentially shows what something would look like from the side. And similar to how a plan view can show what things look like at different heights of the building, an elevation view can show what things look like at different widths and lengths of the building. And likewise, an elevation view can also be used to show intricate detail in places like connections and joints where appropriate. All right, and next is something called a section. And there's two things you need to understand about a section, and that's the point of view and the way they are referenced. First, let's go over the point of view. And basically every time you see this section marker reference symbol, this indicates that there's another drawing that's been prepared that shows exactly what you could see from this point of view if you could slice straight through the structure and remove other things that would usually be in the way. An important thing to note here is that the direction in which the arrows point indicates which angle you are looking from and only the parts of the structure that fall between the head and the tail of this symbol will be shown on the drawing. Another important thing to note is that a section can be taken both on a plan or an elevation view drawing, and that a section view is essentially just an altered version of a plan or an elevation view drawing that provides an additional layer of information because it removes things that would be blocking the view. Okay, and next is the referencing system, which is essentially being created to keep track of where things come from within the larger structure. And the way this works is through the information that's given in the head of the section marker reference symbol, which is basically just a little circle that's been split into two halves. The top half of the circle indicates the section number, and the bottom half of the circle indicates the page number that the section is drawn on. And if the section has been drawn on the same page as the section reference marker, in the bottom half of the circle will be a little hyphen which indicates this. And the way you go about finding a section that's not on the same page is through going to the page that's indicated in the bottom half of the circle and then reading through the individual title blocks that are on the page until you find the title that matches the section number that is in the top half of the circle. Okay, and next let's talk about something called a detail. And a detail is basically used to show more specific information in a particular area. A couple of these areas can be at places like at a concrete joint or at a steel connection. And some of the specific information can be things like dimensions, reinforcement bar size, and bolt and weld configuration. Now where the designer is wanting to provide a detail, what they will usually show is a box or circle around a specific area, which has a line attaching to a circle and the information inside this circle works the exact same way as the referencing system for a section. The detail number is at the top, and the page number that the detail is drawn on is at the bottom. Another thing to note about details is that some of them are unique to the situation they're being used in, and some of them are referred to as typical details, and typical details have been used in several locations throughout the project. And while it is really convenient for both the designer and the builder to have a set of typical details that are used throughout the project, make sure you double check these when you're reading the drawings because they won't be used in the same way in each scenario, and you don't wanna make the silly mistake of assuming it's been used in the same way in that other position. 
All right, and the final thing I want to cover is notes. A note section will appear on every single set of construction drawings and is a critical section for engineers as this is where they can outline any specific information which relates to their design. The notes are always pages that immediately follow the title page and really shouldn't be skipped over as they're intended to be read alongside the drawings as they provide guidance on how to read and interpret the drawing set as a whole. On a very large project, there could be more than say 10 pages of notes, but on most small to medium sized projects, there's less than this, so you should at least have a flick through them just so you're aware of the sort of information that's in there. The types of things that are covered in a note section are going to vary a little bit project by project, but as a whole there are some common things that appear on almost every drawing set. Some of these parts are general notes, loading criteria, earthworks, foundations and retaining walls, concrete, reinforcement and steel work. And some of the things that are covered within these parts are structural loading assumptions, specifications for the performance of formwork, ground condition assumptions and requirements, concrete cover, grade and allowable slump, structural steel grades, standard lap lengths of steel reinforcement bars, and reinforcement symbols and abbreviations. All right, so there you have it. That was some of the essentials I think you need to understand in order to be able to effectively read structural construction drawings. Also, if you're interested in learning about some of the design tasks I do as a graduate structural engineer, then you should check out this other video I made here. And if you wanna find out what I learned in my first six months as a graduate structural engineer, then you should check out this video I made here. Okay, that's it guys. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.